Hey everyone, this is Kathy from Kdell Handmade and I wanted to welcome you to my video tutorial for the As You Wish. Now, if you receive this box, you know all of the awesome goodies that are inside. Um, and today we're going to go over that and we're going to make this pattern here. And this is a pattern that I designed specifically with um, this project box in mind. So there are some features in the bag that are um, kind of reminiscent or nods to different things in the movie. So I'm super excited. I'm so thankful to be a part of this box. And um, let's go ahead and get started and we'll go over our materials. All right, so if you have this box, you know all of the awesomeness that it holds inside. And um, I just can't wait to make this. I'm so excited. And I'm going to try a new process for me for doing something on the cover. So fingers crossed that that actually works. Um, but let's just go ahead and go over some of the pieces that we're going to need. Um, again, every, uh, all the measurements for everything is included in the pattern, which is included in the um, project box. So you'll have, if you have the project box, you'll have a paper copy of all of the pattern pieces, and then you will also receive a digital copy of the pattern. So this one, if you want to reference any of the measurements, um, or seam allowances or anything like that. I won't be going over that in this video, but it is included in the pattern. And so you can always reference it there. All right, so you're going to need, you're gonna have two zippers. And as you can see, one is a little longer, one is a little shorter. On my longer one, I put this awesome Princess Bride. It's a double-sided enamel zipper pull, and that's from New Moxie. Um, and then on the shorter one, I just have the more standard gunmetal um, zipper pull for that. So you're going to have two zipper pulls. You have the webbing that's included, and there are three measurements. So the shortest measurement, there are two of those. Then you have a medium sized, medium length, what I'm calling medium length, strap one of those and then you have one that is uh, longer and you have one of those so all of that is included in the pattern or in the box um, if you want a label i'm going to put this label on my bag so make sure you grab a label if you have one that you want to include you will have uh, zipper tabs there are two zipper tabs the bag body you will have I'm doing, for my bag, I'm doing this canvas for the outer, and I'm doing the waterproof canvas for my lining. So for the outer, there are two pieces. For the lining, there are two pieces. And I've interfaced all of my canvas pieces. I've interfaced it already with SF-101, and then I've also included um, a piece of Decoville Light. And as you can see, I trim that to be out of the seam allowance to help keep the bulk down there. So I've done that on all of my canvas pieces. I've already have it, I already have it interfaced, so it's all ready to go. Okay, so we have the four bag body pieces. And then for the front slip pocket, you have one outer and one lining. There's a zipper pocket on the back. So for the lower portion, you're going to have an outer and a lining. You will have the back pocket lining. So this is going to have a zipper attached to the top. And then this is going to be, so when you unzip it and you look inside, this is the piece that you're going to see. So this is the, the back side of the pocket. You will have your gussets. And I've done, again, one in the canvas, one in the waterproof canvas, and I've interfaced that as well. I've interfaced the outer cotton canvas. I'm not interfacing any of the waterproof canvas. Um, so just as an FYI, none of that is interfaced. Um, now for the front flap, actually let me go over that in just a second. You're also gonna have a full lining panel. Um, and so the pattern piece is included. For that in the instructions, you will have the interior zipper pocket panels, and I've interfaced those with SF-101. So you have two of those, and actually this material here I'm using from the panel that is included in the pattern. 
So this is the bottom half of the panel. Actually, it went this way um, as far as how the width was. I, had to, I trimmed this piece a little bit more, but I was able to easily cut off the bottom half and then it was the perfect size to cut out my two pockets, um, the internal zipper pockets. So if you wanted to do that for your lining, you have enough material there to do that. Um, of course, depending on what you're gonna do with this panel. If you're gonna do something, if you're gonna feature it on the front flap or do it on the inside, you probably won't have enough, so you'll have to use a different material for the lining pockets then. Okay, now for the front flap, what I have is I have, as you see, I've trimmed my panel. I have my front flap piece, and this is only interfaced with SF-101 at this point. And then I've also cut out a piece of Decoville Light. And as you can see, I've trimmed it down so it's out of the seam allowance, but I'm not going to be installing it yet because... What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a reverse applique with this panel. So I'm going to lay this down, put it where I want it to be on this front flap. I'm going to uh, trace around it so I know where to sew. I'm gonna sew a couple lines around it and then I'm gonna cut the inside out, revealing the, you know, so once this piece is gone, it will reveal this panel underneath. And then once all of that is done and I'm happy with it, I'll flip the whole thing over and then that's when I'll put the Decoville light on it. Okay, so that's why this one has not been attached just yet. Okay, and that is it for the pieces. That is all the pieces that we have. Um, the other pieces that are included in the box is you will have your strap hardware. So you have all of those. And these are really great, nice, sturdy, like heavy duty, you know, good quality hardware. So you have your slider bar and then your four rectangle rings. And then you also have your turn lock. And so that's a double heart. If you can see, that's a double heart turn lock. It's got some protective plastic on it right now. Let's see if I can take that off. Um, so that is the double heart turn lock. That is how you will close the front of your bag. Um, there are instructions or suggestions on how you can, um, you know, use a snap or um, even Velcro or something different on the front, or you could even just leave it as a flap and not have any sort of secure uh, closing on it if you want it just as a flap. But this is the one that I'm going to be using. This is included in the box and we are going to be installing that with our bag. Um, other optional items that you will need, um, there's also red thread that is included from Sai Swag. That is, uh, it is called Lipstick Red. It is this beautiful thread here. So I'm going to be using this um, for putting our bag together. I also love double-sided tape. That is optional, um, but for me, I use it a lot. So if you like using double-sided tape, I'm using one eighth of an inch double-sided tape here. So make sure you have that. And then make sure you have some clips or um, some way to secure your pieces together. Um, you are using cotton and woven, so you could use pins, but I prefer um, clips over pins. And also, you have these beautiful rose gold clips that are included in the project box. So, why not use those, right? <laughs> Alright, so that's what I'm going to be using. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Now that we've gone over all of the pieces, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first piece we're going to be working on is the outer gusset. Now, one thing I will say, if you are going to do anything to your bag, such as if you wanted to um, quilt it or do anything like that, you will do that to um, whatever outer panels you want to do that to. Um, you will do that first before we do this step. 
I am not doing that on this bag, so I am ready to get started on the gusset. Um, however, like I said, if you are quilting or doing something other uh, kind of decorative feature to your bag, you can go ahead and do that first and then join me here for this part. Now, if you're just following along with me, we're going to take our outer gusset. And again, this has already been interfaced. So you're gonna lay it down and then you're gonna take your medium length of webbing. As you can see, it's a little bit longer on both sides. You're going to need your two, two of your four rectangle rings and some clips. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna take our double-sided tape and I'm going to lay a strip along both sides of the tape, but I'm gonna leave a couple inches on each edge that don't have any tape on them. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be attaching this to the gusset. We wanna have it centered over our gusset. And then we're going to be attaching the two rectangle rings to the ends of the strap. So again, I will leave it, let's see, I'll make sure it's going the right way. If you are using both of this fabric, make sure you have um, your patterns going the same direction. So that could be easy to get, easy to get mixed up a little bit, so. All right, so you wanna make sure that this is centered right in the middle, and then you're just gonna give it a little press just to help hold it in place. You're gonna take one of your rectangle rings, slide it over the end there, and then you're going to, there are measurements provided in the pattern instructions for how far down you want this um, from the edge of your piece here. So I am going to measure that off camera just to make sure it's in the right spot. But what you wanna do is just add a couple clips to hold that. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Again, I will check that measurement off camera just to make sure it's in the right spot. Okay, then you can add a couple clips here in the middle if you think you would like that to hold, to help hold it all in place. Okay, once you get those in the right spot, everything clipped on, what we're going to do is we're just going to stitch along the outside of the strap webbing. So as close as you can get to this edge, go straight across, go all the way down. Again, getting as close as you can to this hardware, across, and then back. And then I usually, um, just a personal preference, I'll start usually somewhere in the middle just because I know this is the bottom of the bag and it's going to be the least seen. So um, that's usually where I will start my strings. Um, optionally, if you wanted to leave long tails on your strings, once you get here, you can flip it over, pull your strings through to the back and tie it off. And then you wouldn't see any sort of um, back stitching here where you start and stopped your, your stitch line. All right, guys, so I wanted to show you what I'm doing. Um, I stitched that um, strap all the way on the gusset. And then as you can see, I've marked spots where I wanted to um, install rivets. So these rivets are optional. They are not included in the pattern, but around the gusset is a really neat spot to add some personal touches. So you could add a rivet, you could add spikes, you could add um, decorative stitching, you could do all sorts of things. You could even maybe put some bag feet, you know, like from the center and maybe a couple out just in a row. Um, it wouldn't really be a square bag foot like traditionally you would see with bag feet, but it would uh, lift your bag up a little bit so if it did touch the ground, uh, the bag feet would touch first. So 
So what I'm doing is I'm just putting rivets in a straight row all the way across the length of the gusset. And then at the end, where I have the hardware, I have two rivets there. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and set these rivets. Um, once you get that done, your outer gusset is completed. Um, if you're not adding rivets, congratulations, <laughs> you're already done. Um, and then we'll be ready to move on to the next piece. All right, so we are moving on to make the back outer panel. So the pieces that you're going to need for this is you're going to need your outer zipper, your zipper tabs, your back lower pocket, and your back pocket lining pieces. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, we'll set our lining pieces to the side, is we're going to take our zipper tabs, and with your zipper, you're going to lay one tab on each end, so it is going to be facing down, right sides together, so the outer of your um, canvas with the top of your zipper will be right sides together. Okay, now you're going to stitch down both sides according to the seam allowance provided in the pattern. Once you get that stitch down, you're going to flip this back and then stitch along that folded edge. So you will have your um, completed zipper, prep, zipper prepped and ready to go um, so that we can install it onto the pocket. Okay, once you have that stitched down, so again, I top stitched, or I stitched, and then I flipped it over. And actually, I have a lot of loose strings back here. All right, so as we're talking, I'll just trim those off. Um, so yeah, you stitched along each side and then flipped it back, pressed it away, and then top stitched. Okay, there we go. So each side is top stitched. Now what you want to do is grab your pattern piece D. You have two of those. So you're going to lay your outer piece down, right side up. You're going to take your zipper, flip it over so it is also right side down. So you want your right sides together. And then you're going to line up your zipper along the top. I'm just going to clip it in place. You could also do, I'm actually going to use a little clip right here because that's where the zipper pull is. But you could also use a piece of double-sided tape and put it along your zipper and then attach it here um, so that you don't have to worry about it slipping around or anything um, in your stitching. So if you um, would like to baste it in place, you could baste along this top edge. Or if you feel confident and you don't think that... Um, it's going to be an issue for you. You can leave it. We're going to attach the lining piece and then um, we will flip that back and top stitch and you know all that fun stuff. So again if you wanted to um, baste stitch this in place as you can see mine is moving a little bit so I think I'm going to baste mine in place and then I'm going to take this lining panel and I'm going to place it right side down. So your two panels will be right sides together. And then you're going to stitch along this edge according to the seam allowance. So that's going to connect all three of your pieces, your outer, your lining, and your zipper. Then you're going to flip it through. So you're going to press both of these panels away from the zipper. So these two panels will then be right sides together and then we're going to top stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and do all that. I'm going to come back and show you exactly what I did and what it looks like. And then we will be ready to attach the back lining. Okay, so I've stitched all of that together. Now what I want to do 
is you're going to press your panels away from your zipper. And just give it a nice finger press. If you are doing the same as me and you have used Decoville Light on your canvas and cut it away from the seam allowance, you know, cut it smaller so that it stays away, then you have a nice natural fold right here and it lays down pretty nicely for you. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take it to the machine and we're going to top stitch just along this folded edge right here. Okay, now that that is top stitched, we are going to take the back pocket lining and we are going to lay that down right sides up and then take your just completed panel here and it should be the exact same measurement. If it is not, if for some reason your lining pocket here is a little bigger, um, I would suggest lining it up along the curved edges and then you can just trim the excess off the top. Um, but they should line up exact. So now what you're going to do is you're just going to clip this in place. And then you're going to baste stitch all the way around. And that is going to create your back outer pockets. Um, the one thing I will say if you are adding a logo before you base stitch this closed, you can add your logo, um, you can really add it anywhere you'd like on the bag. My personal preference is here on the back, underneath the zipper pocket, um, or underneath the, the zipper for the zipper pocket. Um, I will center it here and just stitch that in place. And that to me is kind of a nice spot to put your logo tag if you're adding one. If you're not, or if you want it in someplace else, you can put it wherever you like. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that, and then I'm going to base stitch all the way around. Okay, so logo is attached. It is base stitched all the way around, and you can open up your zipper pocket, and that's what it's gonna look like on the inside. All right, so now that we have that ready, we are, or have that done, we are ready to move on to the flag. All right, guys, if you saw my unboxing video, you saw my idea of wanting to do a reverse applique with the panel on this front flap. So um, you are going on this journey with me. Fingers crossed that it worked, and let me show you how I'm going to do this. So this is a light tracer, it's an LED light box from Artograph, and what I have done is I have, on the back side, with the light box on, I have just traced a general outline of the shape. So now what I want to do, let me turn the box back off for a second, um, I am going, to, and I drew this line wider than what I want, what I'm going to be stitching on. So don't worry, this is not going to be showing through on the bag once I get it done. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just basically cutting around the shape that I drew and I'm leaving a little bit of a seam allowance here. doesn't have to be perfect this is just going to be a guide for me when I get to the sewing machine okay so now that I have that done I'm going to lay it down right side up on my art box turn the light back on and then I'm going to take my panel and I'm going to lay it over, or I'm gonna take the flap and lay it over the panel. And you can probably see it's a bit of a, a shadow behind there as to where my panel is going to lay. 
Now I know that my um, hardware is going to land somewhere in this area, so I want to pull it up enough so that it won't be impacted by that. I can always flip it over just to make sure. Let's see. Just to make sure that it's straight. And then I think what I want to do is just measure from the bottom of the words because the box that I drew always could be a little bit off. Yep, so that needs to come down a little bit. And then that way you know when you turn once you stitch it and you turn it through. Um, that your your everything is going to be you know straight okay so now actually I think I'm going to move this down a little bit I'm going to keep moving it around it's about two and a quarter two and a quarter okay and then my turn lock if you want to envision that that might help so we can kind of see what's going on here your turn lock is going to be around this in this area somewhere. So if I'm stitching here, I need to make sure I leave enough room down here for the turn lock. Um, I'm actually not. <laughs> see, this is why we're doing this. So now that I see this in place, I think I want to move it back up to where I had it the first time. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to flip this over. Now here, if you want to, I'm used since I'm using canvas on both. I'm going to just put a pin there and a pin just down here just to help hold it in place. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is if you have some sort of Taylor's chalk or heat erasable pen that will show up on this fabric, I'm just going to trace around that shape and then Let's see if this color will show. Yeah, you can barely, you might be able to barely see it on camera, but you can see where my chalk line is here. So that's where I'm going to be stitching when I take it over to the sewing machine. So I'm just going to continue to go around the general shape. Marking it all the way around so I know where my stitch line is. Okay, so now that I have that marked, I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine. I'm actually going to, you can do this with a regular foot. You can just stitch around that line and then just have one line and be done. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my free motion foot. So I'm gonna switch over to that. I'm just going to stitch around it a couple times, just you know, using my hands and going around following the shape, going around it a couple times, making it a little bit more rustic, so I'm not trying to follow the line exactly. It might be a little bit off, a little bit swervy, and I think that's gonna make it look a little bit more rustic. Um, so again, you're gonna wanna make sure that at least one of your lines goes on the, the material. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> you wanna make sure that you sew this to this because you don't want to stitch around it and then cut it out and then you have a big hole and there's nothing you can do. You have to cut a new piece. Um, so you want to make at least your first line, make sure you grab that bottom panel. And then if you're doing more lines, you can, again, stay on that panel or you can even like come off a little bit. You know, it's like, think of like if someone was making scribble circles, like each circle would not be exactly the same shape and on the same line. So that's basically what I'm going to be doing a couple times around. With this okay that's sort of a long-winded description hopefully it makes sense I'm going to take this now over to the sewing machine I'm going to stitch these lines and then I'll be back um, to show you how we cut it out and then fingers crossed we'll see if it worked all right guys <laughs> this is the scary part this is the moment of truth so I've stitched around I don't know if you can see the stitch lines 
I did three passes all the way around and then I just flipped it over to make sure that in my passes everywhere is caught so at one of the passes it caught everywhere on the panel so as long as that looks good now what we're able to do is we are able to go ahead and cut this out are you ready <laughs> all right so how I normally do this is very carefully you want to make a hole in this top fabric only making sure you don't poke through to the bottom so I will take my seam ripper and try to just catch the top just catch the top fabric I can always look through on the back side and see okay it's not caught there so I'm good and I'm just gonna make a little slit okay let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit I think that might help with this next step so what I have is I have some um, applique scissors and so what I want to do is I want to cut around but I'm going to use these scissors let's see if I can get in here first there we go very carefully because I don't want to cut my bottom fabric so once you get going it's not so bad but just getting your scissors in there and getting enough room for them and so what you want to do is you just want to follow there we go you just want to follow your stitch line around All right, moment of truth. Panel is cut. Let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. All right, ready? Oh, so cute. As you wish. All right, so what I will do is um, off camera, I'm just going to go ahead and go around and just smooth out these edges, trim them up, make sure everything is nice and even all the way around and then I will take my piece of Decoville light and I will attach it to the back side of this panel um, and then I'll be back to show you what the next step is all right so the Decoville light is installed on the back Everything is looking great, nice and trimmed up on the front. And we are ready to attach this to our pocket that we made in the previous step. So what you wanna do is you wanna lay your pocket down, right side up. You're gonna flip your panel over and along this straight edge, you're going to line it up with that top. I'm gonna use clips for this one. So you're gonna line it up with the top edge where the zipper is, the top straight edge, clipping it in place all the way across. Okay, now you, what you want to do is you're going to stitch across this straight edge, then you're going to flip this panel up and away from the zipper, and then you're going to top stitch along this folded edge here. Okay, now that that panel is on, it is top stitched, pressed away from that zipper, top stitched up. You can kind of get an idea of what the outside of your bag is going to look like. And you guys, I think that's going to be so cute. Oh my gosh, so cute. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to attach the lining to this. And let me see, I'm going to, there we go, I'll turn it sideways so it fits in the in the full view of the camera. So the next thing we need to do is we need to grab our full lining panel, which is pattern piece F. You're going to take it and lay it down on top of your completed panel. So your panels are going to be right sides together. Now for this part, you are only going to be stitching 
the flap. So not, not the part with the zipper. This whole piece down here we're going to leave unstitched. So let me just turn this. We're going to clip it around. Starting and stopping at where the curve kind of juts out right there. Okay, so now what you're going to do is starting here, according to the seam allowance, you're going to start at this side and you're going to stitch all the way around and then off this other side. So only that top section is going to be stitched. This bottom section down here, not stitched yet because we need to turn this through and you'll see why we're not stitching this part just yet in a uh, the, one of the next steps. But the step for right now, we're going to top stitch all the way around. We're going to come back. We're going to cut little snips in the corners just so it lays nicely when we turn it through. Um, we're going to turn it through and then we'll, we'll be ready to, for attaching it to the back body. Okay, now that that is stitched around, again, leaving this whole piece unstitched, what we're going to do is we are going to cut a little snip, just a couple snips in this corner. So I'm snipping up to the stitch line. Make sure you're being careful so you don't cut through your stitches. If you do, you're just going to have to go, you know, go back over them and make new stitches. Okay, once you get those stitches in the corners and around to the curved edges, what we're going to do is we're going to reach in and turn it right side out. And again, if you have cut your Decoville light smaller than the seam allowance, this should naturally want to fold in pretty nicely. Okay, so that's the lining side. This is the outer side. If you need to, what I like to do is just use a little knitting tool and just to go around to make sure that curve is nice and rounded and pushed out. Same thing on this side. I'll just push it around there. Okay. If you want to, you can add a couple clips to help hold it. And then what we are going to do next is top stitch. So again, I have my zipper here in the center just so it's out of the way, but just like we did in the last step, we're starting and stopping here at these curved points. Um, you can I'll put a smaller clip here. As you can see, these little corners, they like to, they like to pull in on themselves. So just stick your finger in there and kind of pull it out to the seam before you stitch just to make sure they're all the way pulled out because they kind of want to go a little bit more in a curve and we want them to be out this way. All right, so once you get that done, we are going to top stitch all the way around this starting and stopping at these ends here. Okay, there it is, top stitched all the way around. Again, this left open you can see on the lining side, just top stitched around the flap. Now the last thing we need to do is to install the double part side of the turn lock. And so that's going to be there. Um, 
And guys, our front flap is almost done. It's so cute. So getting a little vision of what it's going to look like. Oh my gosh. So cute. Okay. All right. Let's stop oogling at it. <laughs> and let's get to it, right? All right. Let's go ahead and add that snap or add the turn lock. All right, so we are ready to install the turn lock. So this is a double heart turn lock. On the back, you can see there are three screws. So what you need to do first is remove the screws and you wanna put them somewhere where you won't lose them or they won't get knocked off the table and then you're on your hands and knees trying to find it. So once you get all the screws out, the piece will come apart. If you've never used this before, it comes apart in two sections. So this is the back side. This is what's going to go on this side of the flap. And then this one, of course, will be on the top side. Okay, so how I like to do this, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Hopefully you can see it, see it a little bit easier is on the pattern piece there is a spot marked for where you're going to put your hardware. So what I will do is um, once I marked that spot then I will take this piece since it's flatter and a little bit easier to work with and I am going to center it right over the dot that I made. Okay then I'm going to take my pen and just, I'm just going to do it a couple times since it kind of blends with the fabric. But I'm just going to trace around the inside of this circle. Now why am I only doing this circle and not these? Because this turn lock piece will only go through the center hole here. So that's why I only want this because if I cut here then I'll have holes in my bag. So you only want to cut through wherever your um, hardware piece is going to go through. And so that's why in this one, it is just the center. Oops. Okay, so once I get that cut, or once I get that marked, what we need to do is cut that out. Now, this can be a really tricky part because, especially this one is very small, I think I'm going to try and use my seam ripper for the first round of cuts. So what I'm trying to do here is just follow along on that on that line that I drew. Let's see if I can get that shape cut out. I always view this first round as kind of the the test. You know, let's let's do this and see how it lines up, see how it matches. And then we can go back and get in there and trim it up. Because it's always best to cut your hole a little smaller at first. Because if you cut it too big, obviously, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> Unfortunately, we haven't been able to figure out how to glue the fabric back on. So you just want to make sure that it is not too big. So obviously, as you can see, this one is definitely too small. Another thing to keep in mind is I have those three screw holes. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my scissors and try to snip out just a tiny bit all the way around. You can do this once, if you're really good at calculating the size and cutting it just right, you can do it two, three, four, five times. I always err on the side of caution. I will cut a little bit, measure, cut a little bit, measure. Because the worst thing is for the hole to now be too big. And then you got to start over. So don't worry about this part. Just take it easy. Take it slow. 
And as you can see, it's starting to get there. It still needs a little bit more. So let me try to... I'm going to try to cut a little bit more around. Hopefully you can see this in the camera. Okay, and then once you get this to a spot, like that's looking pretty good from this side. So then, here if you can, let me see. I apologize if it's not always in the camera. So it's looking pretty good from this side. On this side you can see it's almost there. A little bit more at the top up here. And then the last thing we'll need to do is just kind of make a mark or a notch for the screws for the hardware. Okay, so that's pretty pretty good. <laughs> I'm so close. Okay, I think just a little bit more off of this corner. Like I said, I go slow and I cut small pieces just because there we go. Now you can see. You can see the whole piece there. Okay, so now the last thing we do is we have a screw hole, as you can see, that we need to be able to get the screw through the fabric for. So I think what I'm going to do is, with my pen, I'm going to keep this lined up in the hole, but with my pen I'm just going to mark kind of where the hole is, and then I have an idea. I think I think it'll work. So what I have is a Japanese hole punch and it looks like this. And I think what I want to do, this is a, a relatively small hole that I have here. And I'm just going to hold it right on the edge just to cut a little bit. You know, like I said, I'm always more erring on the side of caution. So maybe I'll only cut like, if you can see, it's like a half of a hole. And then let's check that again. And if I, if it's enough where I can see the holes for the screws, I mean, that's pretty darn close. I think I'll do a little bit more here at this one. And then with the turn lock like that, I'm going to hold it in place here. Okay. And then what you want to do is you want to place the flat piece that you used in the beginning to mark your hole. You're going to place that over the top. Okay. And then we're going to install these screws one more time. Now you can do, if if you prefer, if you want to, if you have a um, super glue or some kind of thread glue, not thread glue, like a threader, like for screws, that kind of glue, um, you can put that on and that will help to, let's see, not quite in the hole right there. Um, that will help to keep the screw secure so that it won't come off. There we go. That one's getting... I think that one's going in. Yeah. Alright, so that one's in. And like I said, you can just do that if you wanted to make sure that it will, the screw will never come loose. Um, you can do that. But this one I might need to poke because I feel like I quite possibly didn't. Let's see, where 
there's the hole. Yeah, it's right. It's right there. It's so close. Okay. Let's see if I can get this in. I mean, I always could unscrew the other two, you know, and then re-get that hole again, try and punch it a little bit bigger, but I try not to screw and unscrew these little tiny screws too much because then I feel like it'll, it would loosen them up and you could have some problems. Okay, so, yikes, ah, so cute. All right, so there's the turn lock, the double heart turn lock, all installed on the back. The screws are in. All right, let me zoom back out. All right, now the last thing we need to do for this panel is we need to grab one of the bag bodies, the main bag body pieces. You're gonna lay that down right side up and then you're gonna take your panel, your zipper pocket and flat panel, and you're gonna lay it down on top, measuring, um, aligning the bottoms and the sides, and then you want to measure here at the top, like where the edge is, up to that to make sure, up to that top edge, just to make sure, and mine actually is perfect. If your panel is twisted a little bit or, or you know, these measurements here aren't the same, then when your bag turns, um, when your flap comes down, it could be a little wonky on the front of the bag. So you just wanna make sure that these measure the, the um, same distance. Okay, now we're just gonna clip them inside around, take them, um, I should say clip them at the side around the bag. <laughs> I think I'm trying to talk too fast. All right, we're gonna clip them around and then you're gonna take it to the sewing machine and then just baste stitch right here, baste stitch all the way around and keep your zipper pull in the middle up to this curved part. So right here at these curves, that's where you're starting and stopping. Just baste stitch that around and then this panel is done and we can set it to the side. All right, so the next thing that we need to work on is the other side of the bag body. So your front, um, the, the front of uh, the main panel, the front of the bag. What am I trying to say? The main panel on the front of the bag, <laughs> under the flap. So this is going to be the front slip pocket. So that is pattern piece C. What we're going to do, that's a lining and an outer. We're gonna set the lining to the side for now. And what we need to do is we need to install the other half of the turn lock first. Okay, so what you're going to do is there is a mark in the pattern for where you mark your fabric. And the same is going to be true here. So what we need to do is we need to make a spot where we can install that right on the front of the bag. So on the back of this one, there are, if you can see, there are two screws. So those are the two holes that we're gonna need to make. This is a washer that comes with it, so it makes it marking those two spots really easy. So what I will do is I will, where I made that mark in the bag, I'm going to center this bar right here in the center of the washer. I'm going to center that over that mark that I made. Okay, and then I'm just going to make these marks one more time like that. And now I know I'm going to use my Japanese hole punch again. Um, and that's where I know, or how I know, where I need to mark those holes. So what I will do is I will just, again, take the screws out, and I will just lay it on the side, on its side, so I can see how these prongs, I don't know if you can see that, let me zoom in some for you. 
okay, so where these prongs are, where these little, where the screws will go, how they're going to line up against the marks that I made here. So when I hold it like this, I can see, it might be hard to see on camera, but I can see that this is pretty much centered in that hole that I made. Same on this one. So if I just use my Japanese punch and make a hole in the center of those marks, I should be good, should be good. <laughs> so let's go ahead and try that. So this is kind of funny because I feel like I'm making a hole right on Wesley's mouth. Okay, and then right on his hand. Okay, so there are the holes there. And that looks pretty, yeah, that lines up really well. Okay, so this has a piece of Decoville light on the back of it already. If you feel like, depending on what your fabric choice is, if you feel like you would prefer to have um, a little bit more uh, support or background, um, you can always use a piece of Decoville Heavy on it. I think with the SF-101, the Decoville Light, and this washer here, I think that I will be just fine. Okay. So, I'm going to put the holes through. Actually, I think the holes might need to be a little bit bigger. Let's see. Yeah, I think my holes need to be a little bit bigger. So let me go ahead and change. Let me grab my... Let's see, where are they? Uh, here we go. Okay, so this Japanese punch comes with different sets of... Um, dies or cuts whatever you want to see this is you can see that's the size that I did and then this one on the left is a little bit bigger so it's really easy to change you just put it in there and then this little washer or this little screw whatever you want to call it is on top all right and let's see if I can make these holes a little bigger And see if that will go through yeah yep yeah. perfect that's the perfect size as you can see that went right through there okay so now that that is there I can kind of gently lay that there and it should be just fine I'm going to take a screw and placing it over or over the through the hole in the washer I'm going to line up the screw, if I can. Sorry, my hand's in the way. This is a little tricky. All right, so as you can see, I just lined it up there with that hole and just put it in a couple turns just to hold it in place. That way I can put, let's see if you can see that. I can put the other screw in. And once you get one in, go ahead and tighten them both. And then as you can see from this side, there's your turn lock. And then I would recommend that the last thing I would do on this, since there is that raw hardware, I would just add a little piece of duct tape over the back of that. And that's just going to help protect your fabric from any wear and tear against that metal washer and the screws. Okay, and then if you wanted to go ahead and grab your flap that we just finished in the last step, you can always see how it'll go right on there and turn lock. There you go. All right, so now that we have that turn lock, the other half of the turn lock installed. We are going to put this whole panel piece together. So this one's pretty easy. We just have these couple pieces. So you're laying your outer and your lining right side together. 
you're going to clip it in place along the top edge, the top curved edge. And this will be a little tricky just because of your turn lock. It won't allow your fabric to lay completely flat over here, but that should not be too much of a problem as you're sewing it together. So once you get that clipped, we're going to stitch along this curved edge, snip a couple snips all the way around just to help it so that when we turn it through, it will lay nicely. Um, and then we're going to turn it around so that the panels will be right sides out, wrong sides together. And then we are going to top stitch again along that top curved edge. Okay, that is stitched. Top stitched along that edge. So now we're just going to do a couple little snips. All the way across. You want to snip up to your thread as close as you can get without snipping your thread. <laughs> So just space them out all the way across. And then once you get all the cuts, we're gonna take it and turn it around or turn it through so that the panels are wrong sides together, right sides out. And we can put some little clips there. Feel free to use your fingers, roll the seams if you have to. Okay, and again, this one is laying really nicely and, and it kind of falls in place pretty easily because we cut that Decoville light out of the seam allowance. So this top edge right here, it just kind of naturally wants to fall like that. All right, now we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and top stitch this curved edge. All right. Once you have that top stitched, you can go ahead and trim off these little dog ears that are on the sides here. And then we are ready to attach the slip pocket onto the main bag body. So grabbing your other outer body panel, you're going to take your slip pocket, lay it on top, aligning the sides and the bottom curves. And just like we did on the other side, we're going to measure to make sure, so that's like six, seven, this side needs to go up just a teeny bit. Okay, so you want this, again, you want this just to be even right here. Make sure these two measurements are even, and then you're going to clip that. And then we're going to take it to the sewing machine based around the curve, the bottom curve here, based around that edge. And then we are ready to attach the gusset to our two main outer panels. All right, so to attach the gusset, you're going to take this slip pocket panel that you just completed and then you're going to take the um, exterior gusset that you completed early on when we first started making the bag. What you want to do is you want to find the center mark of everything. So I will make a little fold and then just mark it that way. You could also, some people also like to make a tiny little snip in the corner like Just the tiniest of little snips so when you open it you can see where that center piece is um, it's up to you whichever way you prefer that's what you could do and then we need to find the center on the bottom or on the panel I should say so this could be a little more tricky again because of that hardware already installed so on this one I think I'm going to make a tiny snip See, yeah, I can see that <laughs> basically just snipped through the the interfacing here, but that's okay. All right, so now I'm going to take my gusset and matching up the center mark on my gusset with the center mark 
on the bottom of the bag. And I'm going to use smaller clips for this one since I'm, I'm working around a curve here. So what I will do is just add a clip in the center and then maybe two clips on either side of it along the bottom of the bag and that's just going to help to hold that in place. And then from there I'm going to take this top edge and line it up, line these two corners up here and I'm going to add a clip there. And then I'll add a couple, again, just maybe two clips down the side to help hold it in place, two or three clips. And then I'm gonna come around to this other side, doing the same thing, lining it up at the corners and adding two or three clips down the side. Okay, now from here what we want to do is we need to finish clipping it all the way around here. So I will work, I'll flip my bag upside down so I'm working on the curved edge, and I will work both towards the curve. So I'll work a little on the bottom, I'll work a little on the side until I get to this curve here. Now, this part can be a little tricky because it's tight. So one thing that you could do if you have one, and this is a Tim Holtz, it's a mini stapler, you could just add a couple staples there and that, for me anyway guys, this is a game changer. <laughs> it helps hold it exactly where I want it to be. Especially because this is, you know, it's on a curve and it's tight and you've got lots of layers and some of them want to slip around. So I will just add those staples there and that will hold it for me as I'm stitching around. And then after I stitch, you can just pull those staples out. Okay, so now we'll do the same thing to the other side. Sure, I'm catching all the layers. And this one you can you you might have noticed I'm doing it a little bit where you can see a little bit of this bottom here, and that's just because I have a little extra. So I want to make sure that I catch that that lining on it. Okay, so now that I have that all clipped and stapled in place. I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew all the way around starting and stopping at the beginning and at the end um, according to the seam allowance in the pattern instructions. Alright, so there's our gusset all stitched on all the way around. So now what we need to do is we need to attach the other bag piece to this other side of the gusset. So again, on this one, what you need to do is find the center of the bag. I just line up the sides, the bottom, and then I will make a tiny snip, a tiny snip right there in the bottom. Okay, you can just barely see it. It's right there. And then that's where I will line up. I'll flip this over. So this little snip with this little snip. And we're going to do the exact same thing, exact same process to this side, just like we did to the other side.
Okay, now that that one, same, is clipped and stapled in place, I'm going to take it to the sewing machine with this side up, the bottom side down, so that I'm working along this, and I will just push this top edge out of the way as I stitch all the way around. Again, starting and stopping, you know, back stitching at the beginning and at the end. And then that will be the last step to put our outer panels together. So then um, we'll be able to turn it through and start to get a peek at what our bag is gonna look like. Okay, that is all stitched together on both sides. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple snips here in the corners again. Just to help make it a little bit easier to help those corners really curve and push out and look really nicely when we turn our bag through. Alright, and then if you want to, you can always also just trim it down. That's up to you. Sometimes I do it on the corners. If there seems to be a little extra hanging off, like here, I'll just trim this piece off. And then on this bottom piece. And then this one on this side actually looks pretty good. Yeah, I'll just leave that one on that side. All right, so, guys, this is so cute. Okay, so now, we are ready to push the bag through. Turn it through to the right side. There we go. All right, once you get that turned through, you can push out those corners. It's looking so good. Those corners turned out so well. It is really worth it. I know it can be a pain sometimes to trim down your interfacing to keep it out of the seam, but it just makes it so much easier and nicer to turn it through. Obviously I need to, you know, this isn't done, I'm going to be turning it through again, but you see how nicely that seam sits? Let's see if I can turn it, and then on the front here, it just sits like it goes where it's supposed to go which makes our job easier as bag makers. <laughs> makes us have to do less work to try and convince it, no, no, this is where you need to go. And it says, no, I don't want to go there. I want to go here. And we say, but no, you can't go there. I need you to be over here. Anyways, it just saves us a bunch of, you know, dialogue with our bags. <laughs> All right, so this is the outer bag completed. Guys, look how cute. Oh my gosh. That is going to be adorable. So adorable. And then we got the Princess Bride zipper on the back. The zipper pocket. Okay. All right. Well, we are done with our outer bag panels. That part is put together. We can put this to the side. Now would be a good time to take a break. It's kind of like, ah, you know, a sense of accomplishment. Let's take a break. Have a piece of chocolate. Have a glass of wine. Whatever you like. Um, so let's go ahead and we will put this to the side. Take a quick break. And then we'll come back and we will um, make the lining panels for our bag. And we'll put it all together. All right. See you in a few. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to creating the lining for this bag. So what you're going to need is, for this next part, you're going to need one of your bag body pieces. So I'm gonna set the other one to the side. And then you're going to need your two interior zipper pocket panels. These two here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to leave this right side up and then you're going to take your pocket panel 
and lay it right side down. So what we're going to be doing is drawing a zipper box. And if you've ever created a zipper box before, you know the general steps for what we're going to do here. But there are instructions provided in the pattern for how long and how big we're going to make this box. Um, so there will be a measurement down from the top and then again in from the top of this panel. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw the box this way and then, um, let's see here, make mine a little bit bigger. line it up here okay um, so once we get the box drawn then what we're going to do is we are going to stitch on this line so with a, a more narrow um, a shorter stitch length we are going to stitch um, just all the way around here and then what we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to cut the center and that's going to create the pocket to turn it through Okay, so once your box is drawn, you have that stitched on. What we're going to do now is we need to cut down the center line. So basically, I'll just draw a line here to show you what we're going to be doing. And this is just a rough, a rough idea. Um, but we are going to be cutting down the center line, stopping at the corner, and then coming out to these, you know, stopping a little short of the edge, and then we're gonna be cutting lines out to the corner. So we're gonna try and get as close as we can into those corners um, so that when we turn it through, we won't have any kind of wrinkles or bumps or anything like that. So um, it is up to you how you want to cut this, but basically, we're just going to cut a line down the center. I feel pretty comfortable using my rotary cutter. You can also use your scissors if you prefer. Um, so what I will do is I will use my rotary cutter for the, for the majority of the center cut. And then I will come in and then use my scissors to snip out to my stitch line. So you want to get as close as you can to those corners without cutting your stitches. If you do happen to snip your stitches, then just go back and stitch over them again to keep that secure. Okay, so now that we have our corners cut, what you need to do is you're going to take your panel and just push it through that hole. Now this part can be a little tricky as it sometimes doesn't want to lay right. But basically what we're doing is we're just pushing this whole panel through to the inside. You might have to work it to get the seam allowances or to get the seams to line up straight. But that's the general idea of what we want for our finished product. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just continue to work it with my fingers, try and get these seams nice and flat. I'm going to take it over to the ironing board, give it a nice press, press it on this side as well. Now because this is waterproof canvas, I'm not going to hold it on there too long, um, but just enough to kind of, you know, give it a little press and help it to hold in place. Now here is where you will notice any kind of puckering in these corners here. So if you didn't snip close enough to your lines and you have puckers here, um, that's the reason why. So. One way to fix that is just to turn it over, push everything back out, and then come in and try to snip a little bit closer to your corners here. Okay, so I'm gonna take this over to the ironing board. I'm gonna give it a nice iron. Hopefully everything lays nice and flat, and then um, we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, so that is nice and pressed. Not too bad in the puckering department, so I'm happy with that. There's a slight little bit of a wave here, but I think once I get that stitched down, um, when the zipper is installed, it won't be a problem, so I'm just gonna leave it. 
Now the next thing we need to do is install the zipper. So taking your remaining zipper and then figuring out, just lay your zipper whichever way you want it to open and close. I usually like mine to open and close from the left. So I'm gonna have the open side facing this way. And then, so the flat side of the zipper pull will be to the right. If you like yours to open the other way, just go ahead and flip it. Then I'm going to put a piece of double-sided tape along the length of the zipper on both sides. And what we're going to do is we're going to center it in the window here of our pocket. So I will take off the paper backing. Trying to keep that zipper pull in the center. Okay, then what I do is I usually eyeball it. I usually just kind of flip this back, leave about the same amount on either side of the window the same amount of zipper tape on either side of the window and then just come on in and try to center the zipper as much as possible right in the center of that window and so I can feel the ends of my zippers are here so that's pretty even give that a little press just to help hold it in place then we're going to take it to the machine and we're going to stitch a box all the way around right on the edge, you know, as close as you can get, maybe an eighth of an inch or so away from the edge here. We're gonna just stitch all the way around. If, again, this is another spot where you can start and stop here, um, or you can start and stop anywhere. I generally start and stop here when I'm doing my boxes. Um, but if you don't like that little start and stop, you know, those couple back stitches, you can leave long tails, and then this is another spot where you can just pull the tails through to the back side, tie them off, and then you won't be able to tell where you start and stop um, on the front. So I'm going to take that over to the sewing machine, uh, stitch the box on, and then we'll be ready to attach the other half of the zipper pocket. All right, so I stitched my box on. I'm going to show it up. A little closer over here is where I started and stopped and I was just going to show you how I pull the strings through so let me zoom in here so I have long strings on the front long strings on the back and then I'll use my um, seam ripper just to help help me pull it through but if you can see let's see if I can show this for the camera if you take one of these strings and you pull it you see that little loop that kind of popped up right there? I will grab that and then just gently pull it out. That's one of the strings. Then the other string from the back, see I pulled it and that little loop popped up. Try and get that. And gently pull that through as well. So now you can see there are no more strings on the front. You can't really see where that's that where I started and stopped stitching. And then I'll take the strings, the four strings in the back, divide them by two. Just tie a couple knots. And then trim the threads. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could add a little dab of glue, super glue or something like that. Uh, fabric glue just to help hold those threads in place but that's how you do that and that's pretty uh, safe I would say I, I haven't ever had a problem with it coming loose or pulling out or anything like that as I was using the bag so all right so now what you want to do to finish your pocket you want to take your other pocket piece and lay it right side down on top of the other panel Okay, we are going to clip that in place around the top and the two sides. The top and the two sides only. So that's where we're going to be stitching. We are not going to stitch the bottom. And that is because this is going to be our turning hole for birthing the bag through once we get everything put together. We're going to turn it through the pocket. 
So we are only going to stitch, I'll back stitch a couple here because I want to make sure that these are pretty secure since we're going to be, you know, turning and pushing stuff through there. I don't want any stitches coming loose. So I will start, go all the way around, across the top and to the other side. I'll do it this way. Flip this back, stitch to the end, needle down, turn the whole piece, flipping this top panel back out of the way, across to the top, again keeping the needle down, turning it, and then stitching to the bottom with a couple back stitches. And then I'm just going to put my, make sure my zipper is all the way open, and I will just leave it open. I'll leave the zipper pull in the middle so that I'm able to get my hand in there when we're ready to do the turn through and then I'll push it the rest of the way. But for now, I just leave it in the middle because I don't want it to get in the way of my stitching. Okay, so I will take that to the machine. I'll stitch these three sides and then believe it or not, we'll be ready to put our panels together. Okay, so that is stitched on the three sides. It is left open here on the bottom. As I said, this is going to be our turn through hole. Now, if you want to, you can open this all the way up. Um, and that will be good. Actually, I'm gonna leave it in a little bit because we're going to be attaching the gusset and that way I'll know for sure that it'll stay out of the way over here. Okay, so now just as we did with the front panels, we need to mark the center we only need to do it on the bottom here, on this one. So you can either mark it with a pen or do a tiny little snip, as I did. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side for the other panel. And then we're going to do the same thing for the lining gusset. Finding the center there, and I'm going to snip both sides, tiny little snips, for this one. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to attach our gussets, just like we did for the outer panel. We're going to flip the gusset over, lining up those notches, and I'm going to just put a few clips across here to hold the bottom in place. One more on this side. And then again, we're going to match up these top corners. Clip down the side. Okay, and then the same thing on this side, lining up that top corner. Adding a few clips down. Okay, now just like we did on the outer, you can, you have to work this around since it's a little bit, um, you know, the layers are a little bit tricky, but this one bends a little bit easier. So sometimes I'll just go ahead and I'll just kind of push it in place and work it around. Okay, and then same for this. But you could use the mini stapler if you just felt like that would hold it a little better for you. You're always more than welcome to use whatever method you prefer, whatever method you like best. I'm showing you just one way of how you can do things. There are many ways, obviously, um, on how to get the job done. <laughs> um, so I'm just showing you the way that I do it. Okay, so now that um, this is all clipped in place. We are going to, according to the seam allowance, we're going to stitch all the way around here, 
um, back stitching at the beginning and the end and then we will come back we will attach the other panel to the other side of the gusset in the same manner. Okay, once I have that all clipped in place, I'm going to take it over and put this against my um, sewing machine table. I'm going to pull this out of the way so that I can stitch around and I'll just continue to pull this back and out of the way as I stitch all the way around that edge. And we're so again starting and stopping according to the seam allowance all the way around to the end. Okay, so that is stitched. Both sides are stitched on. We'll see what the inside of our bag is going to look like. Okay, now the last thing we need to do before we attach it to the outer is we just need to trim the seam allowance. I will say, just as a side note, um, if you are making this bag and you used, um, here, let me just tell you what I'm doing here. I'm just gonna come in a little bit and then I'm gonna trim, trim the seam allowance down like this. I'm going to trim it down by half. So what I did is I just left a little bit here and that's so that when I am attaching this to the main outer panels, I just have a little bit more seam to work with here. Um, but I want the bulk out of the rest. So that's why I'm just going to leave a little bit of a tab here at the top and then trim it around the rest. Okay, so now what I was saying about if you're using, when you're making your bag, if you're using, um, you know, if you make this with other materials and it's a thicker material, or you make it with, um, maybe you have quilted it or you added foam to your bag, you might feel like it's a little bit much to try to turn all that through the zipper pocket. So in that case, what I would recommend is that you do a drop-in lining. And there are instructions for a drop-in lining provided in the pattern. And really, if you haven't done a drop-in lining before, it's not too bad, it's not too hard. You just end up folding over like that, the seam allowance on both the outer and the lining. You drop it in, clip it in place, and then just stitch it. Um, but that does save you from having to try to, you know, do all the work and finagle it through an opening if you're using material that won't really <laughs> allow you to do that very easily. I made one, one of these bags with foam and I quilted it and I added spikes to the bottom of the bag. And I can show you that bag in just a second here, but uh, once I get these seam allowances trimmed down. But I will say with the foam and with the spikes, yeah, I do not recommend <laughs> trying to birth that. <laughs> Especially with spikes. So that one is a, a great example of one that I would turn it through, or use a, use a drop-in lining, I mean. I would use a drop-in lining on that one. But this one I've just used SF-101, nothing on the lining, and then on some of the outer panels I also added Decoville light. So I should be able to turn it through pretty easily without too much struggle, I should say. Okay, I'll trim these corners a little bit and that's just to help it lay nicely once we get it turned through. I will say if you are um, doing a drop-in lining, some people love them. For me, it's sort of a love-hate relationship. 
I mean, I love it because you don't have to birth the bag through a, a little opening. Um, but I am not a fan of it because I struggle getting my top stitching just the way I like it. So let me just show you that bag real quick. So this is the one I did with spikes. And this is foam and quilted. And yeah, it was not... Um, you see, that's where I started and stopped. <laughs> Usually I do that in the back of the bag. Um, and then I use contrast, it's contrast stitching for it. So um, as you can see here, like see how my lining is up a little bit? You know, that's just me being picky, but um, that's where I struggle with doing a drop in lining. But like I said, for these spikes, there was no way. These are really spiky spikes. Um, so that was not gonna happen as a turning through bag without possibly, you know, a trip to the hospital. <laughs> And I would really rather not go to the hospital if I don't have to and then have to explain to them, well, you see, I was birthing this bag and it had spikes on it. And yeah, so. <laughs> okay, so now what you want to do is you want to take your bag and I'm going to push mine back out so that it is no I take that right I take that back we're not gonna push it out we want this one to be right sides out we want the lining to be wrong sides out so when we put them together they're going to be right sides together Whew, I'm glad I stopped before I got that far okay so now think about what you want to think about is so you have the zipper pocket right where do you want your zipper pocket to be in your bag? Do you want it to rest along the back side of the bag or do you want it to be in the front? If it matters to you, I usually like mine to be in the back here. So I'm going to put my bag together that way. I'm going to push it in. So now you can see your your outer and your lining is right sides together. You got your pocket, and now you got your flap. Your flap needs to be tucked out of the way. So what I will do is I'll just roll it up, and then I tuck it in this back pocket here. Just fold it in, push it down in there. Because what you want to do is you want to make sure that you can keep your with this pushed down, you want to be able to bring your lining to this outer right here. And then you want your pocket out of the way so that it doesn't get caught up in there. Okay, so then what I will do is, well, there's my hardware trying to peek out. So push the hardware in. And then I'm going to line up the corners first. So at the seam, I'm going to put a clip in the middle and then I'm going to put a clip on either side and here I'll just put one in the middle of the gusset and then lining up this gusset and I'm just nesting my seams so one seam allowance is being pushed in one direction and the other one in the other direction and then another clip here and then coming around to the other side, doing the same thing. That, I'll tell you, that pocket, that flap, can be a bit of a bugger. So don't be afraid to show it who's boss. Manhandle it if you have to. <laughs> but once you get everything clipped, it's generally not a problem. Just getting everything lined up right, just how you want it. Okay, so once I have those clipped, then I will pull my bag. And this is when you wish that you had a third or fourth arm. <laughs> so you can pull your bag tight and then go ahead and clip along. the rest of the way, all the way around the bag.
as you can see that is clipped all the way around. I'm now going to take it to the sewing machine according to the seam allowance provided in the pattern. I'm going to top stitch, not top stitch, just stitch all the way around the top of this bag connecting these two pieces together. Okay, once you get that done then we are going to be turning it through this pocket opening and hopefully you had your Wheaties for breakfast because that can be a bit of a workout. All right, so let's go ahead and get that top stitched um, or get that stitched around the top there and then we'll be back to um, do our daily workout. Okay, once you get that all top stitched, it is time to turn it through your pocket. So reaching in, if you left your zipper pocket partly open, you can reach your finger in there and slide it open the rest of the way. And then you're just gonna reach into your bag and just start working it trying to get it pulled out through that pocket. All right, once you get the, mo the majority of it, you can reach in, start pushing it out. As you can see, this is where our flap was tucked in. So you can pull your flap back out. Just pushing the lining out. Okay, now we want to take the lining and push it through to the inside. So once you have everything pushed in, you can tuck it in, check it to make sure it all looks good. Everything looks like it's laying nicely. If you need to make any adjustments, for instance, if your um, lining is a little bit baggy, you can pull it back out, increase the seam allowance, you know, just, just do another row of stitching on the inside of your last row of stitching to make the seam allowance larger and then push it back in and then it shouldn't be too baggy on the inside then. Um, but anyways, now is your chance is what I'm saying. Before you close this zipper pocket opening, you can always pull your bag back through, make any adjustments that are needed. And then once everything is perfect, just how you want it to be, you will come in and you're just going to fold this pocket under and I'll do somewhere between three eighths and one half of an inch for my seam allowance kind of whatever wherever it wants to hold, fold sometimes it'll just fold in nicely and other times you just got to work it You could always fold this pocket over and iron it um, as the seam allowance before you do all the other stuff, um, but I generally don't do that. To me it's just an extra step and then it doesn't always help me in the final, like in this part right here, it doesn't always help me. I don't know if I'm... If somebody else has a trick on how you can make it work better, but I find that I often have to, you know, play with it and fix the seam allowance and make sure it's all straight and stuff anyway. So, like, why do it twice, right? Work smarter, not harder. Okay, so once you have that, your, your lining is just how you like it, you're going to stitch across the bottom, closing that hole. You can poke or push your pocket back into your zipper. And then the last thing we need to do is top stitch around this part of your bag. Okay, so once that's out of the way, we are just going to then
top stitch. And then the last thing we have to do is to create the rest of our uh, strap handles and our bag will be done. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is finish our strap or make our strap and then that will, um, we'll attach it to the bag and then we'll be done. So you're gonna be using your two shorter pieces and then your one longer piece. Now for this pattern, what I've done is I've made, uh, this will be your adjustable strap piece and then this is just a connector piece that goes from your bag to the adjustable strap just as a, an added design feature. If you don't like that, you are more than welcome to make this, this strap any way you like. Um, you can make it as one long adjustable strap. Obviously you wouldn't cut these pieces then. Um, or you could make it as a fixed handle. Um, it doesn't have to be an adjustable strap. It can be anything you want it to be. Any, any design, any style. Um, this is just one option that I've provided in the pattern. Okay, so now because this webbing has a design, you want to make sure all of your, your designs are going in the same direction. We're going to work on the adjustable part of the strap first. So taking one end of your strap and your adjuster bar, you're going to slide it, let me flip it this way, you're going to slide it up and over like that. And then you're going to take this piece and fold it back. So let me get these pieces out of the way so it picks up on the camera a little better. So you're going to fold this back over on itself. Now you have a couple options here. You can add a couple rivets. You can stitch a box. Um, you can do both. Uh, whatever you prefer, whatever method you prefer, that's what I would suggest um, doing. I'm going to be adding rivets. So um, that's the method I'm going to be using. And I'll show you how I do that. I have two presses. I have I invested in these presses and they have saved my hands so much. So I will link to these in the um, description if anyone is interested. Uh, but this is a cam snap press. And then this one is actually one that I ordered from the UK. So I have them set up. So one is a hole punch and one is for... Um, setting the rivets. So what you're going to do, whichever method you prefer, you're going to secure this first around this center adjuster bar. So I'm going to just make two holes here. And the one thing that I will say that I love about using um, strap webbing is that I'm sure you've noticed, but they have like the little sections. So there's like, I call them sections anyway, but they are um, like where the, I don't even know how you call it, but I count, I, I mean, I don't know how it's made, but I count like five sections. So I kind of use those as my guides as to where I'm going to be putting everything. So it makes it real easy to keep it all nice and centered. Okay, so now I'm just going to attach these rivets. And then with my press, with my cam press, I'm just going to set the rivets. Okay, there you go. And I apologize that the camera is shaking a bit. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to take this part. Let's put this part aside for now. And let's just do, we're going to attach these two. So same thing, all you want to do is you want to fold it over. We're going to do the same thing for both. So you can, you have an option here. You can just keep it folded flat like that and stitch it or put a rivet or two in it. 
or if you prefer you can fold it under if you don't like that raw edge showing you can fold it under so that you have this as well just this folded edge so you don't have that raw edge now I singed the ends of my webbing with a lighter so I don't think I have to worry about fraying so I'm just going to leave it like this and I'm going to add two snaps or two rivets I should say just as I did here I'm going to do that to each of the straps so first for this one setting the rivets over here. Okay, so there's one set. We'll do the same thing to the other side. So now thinking about this, this is going to be coming up one side of your bag and then this will be coming up from the other side of your bag. So you want your designs to be the same way. So I'm going to do this one on this side of the webbing. So when you look at them, your webbings will be upside down, but they will be the right side, the right direction when you attach them to your bag. All right, and then just measuring this to make sure the straps are the same length. All right, so now what you should have at this point is you should have the two shorter straps with the D-rings connected to one side. Your straps will be upside down if you look at one. So if the designs are going the same way, you will have hardware on each side. And then you have your one strap, the center piece, which is going to be the adjustable portion. Okay, and then you have your bag. So grabbing your bag, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the short sides. Now looking at your bag, see if I put it over here, it would be upside down. So flipping my bag over this way, it is the right way around. So I'm going to fold this over the other half of that strap webbing, just as I did on this side making sure my designs are going the right way. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing. So adding the rivets or stitching the box, attaching this piece of the strap to the bag. So let me measure that again. And this part can be a little more tricky just because you have the bag attached. but it shouldn't be, it really shouldn't be too bad. But all the steps are the same. Okay, and setting that side. So that side is set. Now we need to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so now that that is attached, the last thing we need to do, 
have this for right now. And then we have our center adjuster. So the last thing we need to do is attach this to our center. So the piece that doesn't have any hardware on it, because the other end has the adjuster. So you're going to slide that through. Now I'm making sure my designs are going the same way here. You're going to slide it through that D ring on that or that rectangle ring on that side. And then making sure to not hold on. Hold on. Okay, so we're going to do it the other way actually. So I'm sliding it through this way on this side from the inside of your strap. So let me do this again. <laughs> okay, so to attach your center, we're going to take the piece that doesn't have any hardware on it and lining it up so your 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 prints on your webbing will be reversed because this is going to be the inside. So when you flip it over, they will be going the right way around. Okay. So now you're going to slide it up and over, creating that adjuster bar. So making sure everything is nice and straight. You have that slider and then bringing it over to this side and folding it under. And then you're going to attach this the same way with rivets or with stitches. So I'm going to do stitches here, or it's not stitches. <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking stitches. That would be strange, right? To do rivets on everything else and then do stitches for the very last one. So rivets for this one. And then I'm going to set these okay there we go all right so let me get my presses out of the way here all right guys that is it that is all our bag is done I can't even stand it this is so cute so you can wear it as a shoulder bag you know you can bring it all the way short wear it as a shoulder bag you can lengthen it wear it as a crossbody you got your turn lock your slip pocket here inside zipper pocket And then on the back side, you know, you have that hidden slip pocket on the inside there, and then you have your zip pocket on the back. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Susie did such an amazing job with designing this fabric, and I'm so excited to have been able to have been a part of this box. This is one of my all time favorite movies, and just to be able to design a pattern that is a nod towards that movie and then a part of this box you guys it's been so exciting for me i hope you really enjoyed this um, sewing tutorial and that you have a lot of fun with this box and please um, feel free to be creative do something wild do something crazy something nobody expects just whatever you do just have fun and um, please share your makes when you get them done i love to see what you would make with the pattern and if you are joining this video as, as um, when the box releases in September of 2023, um, the pattern will be available at a later date as a standalone pattern on my website. So keep an eye out for that. If you are joining um, 
later, if you're watching this video later than that, then the pattern most likely is already available on my website. So you can go there at kdillhandmade.com and find the pattern there to download. And yeah, guys, I just hope you had so much fun and I can't wait to, wait to see what you all make.